Okay, so let's actually get down to creating a VPC. So what are we going to make here? Obviously, we'll make a VPC, and then we're going to make some subnets. And in our case, we're going to make two subnets per availability zone. That'll be a total of six because there's three availability zones. So each availability zone, in my case, is going to get one public subnet and one private subnet. So the public will be the ones that allow resources or servers inside of it to reach the outside internet and have the outside internet reach them. Private will be that the resources or servers inside of those private subnets can reach the outside internet through the NAT gateway, but the outside internet cannot reach those servers. There's going to be two route tables to do that. The private subnets will have one route table that talks to the NAT gateway that routes traffic through the NAT gateway, and another route table that is used for the public subnets, and that has an internet gateway in that route table, which routes traffic through the internet gateway. So of course, that means we'll also have an internet gateway. And in my case, I'm going to do one NAT gateway, although I'll show you how you could do multiple if you wanted to. So let's just dive right into that. Okay, so we're going to use Terraform to create this. This is going to be very similar to the VPC module in the Terraform course if you watched it. If you are unfamiliar with Terraform, you should definitely watch that course. It's free because that is the basis for a lot of what we're going to do to manage AWS in the courses on Cloudcast. It's predominantly going to be using Terraform. So this is a very stock setup. We have a provider of AWS, the latest version of 3.27 as of the time of this video. I'm using S3 backend with a bucket that exists and a key. So this is the file path for the file inside of the bucket where it's going to save the state for Terraform. I'm going to create everything in US East 2 in Ohio. I'm using a profile in my AWS credentials called Cloudcasts, all that good stuff. So we have some variables here. The variables infrastructure environment. I'm just going to default to staging here just because. Default region, US East 2. And that's all I want to cover right now. Over here, We'll see that I have a modules directory. That module has a VPC module inside of it, and we'll see that set up in a second. And then we can just see here how I'm using that VPC module over here to create the VPC. So I create a locals block here, and I'm going to make a variable named CIDR subnet, so a local variable named CIDR subnets. This is going to call a function that's built in to Terraform, and it's going to divide a subnet up for me. It's going to divide an IP address range up into subnets. In this case, notice I'm doing the slash 17 subnet here, not the slash 16. So I'm actually doing half of the possible IP addresses that AWS is going to allow me to. This function I cover in that Terraform course as well. So I'll only just say that I'm dividing it into six subnets. So I have this uh, CIDR subnets variable, and that is going to be a list of, of IP address ranges it'll give me. And I'm just going to take a slice of these. So zero through three of that slice of the uh, list of CIDR subnets and then three through six. So the public subnets are going to get the first three. The private subnets are going to get the second three. Now, we have a bunch of variables here. Infrastructure or environment, we're passing through into our VPC module. The CIDR range we want, again, it's slash 17. It's getting passed through to the VPC module. The availability zones to create the VPC inside of, again, getting passed into the module. And our list of public subnets and private subnets, which is going to be a list of IP address ranges that we want to create for each subnet type. Now, these variables are actually defined here in our variables for this VPC module we've created. So availability zones, public subnets, private subnets, you can see their lists of strings. And these two variables, infrastructure environment and the CIDR range we want for the whole VPC. The default is slash 16, but I'm passing in slash 17, so this will get used. And inside of our main.tf file for the VPC, we can see that I am actually calling another module. This is just like from the Terraform course, but again, I'll cover it really quick. This is the an official uh, community module, this one that's maintained by HashiCorp itself, and it's very useful. So the source is this name. This is the name of the module from the Terraform registry. The version is 2.78, which is the latest as of this recording. And I'm basically passing through the variables that I defined here straight into the VPC module, because these are uh, variables that the VPC module is defined here, and the Terraform registry actually wants as well. So CIDR is one. Uh, the name of it, of course, the availability zones we want, the private subnets and public subnets, and you can also do other ones, right? This particular module will also have things like database subnets and other good stuff like that, and then the tags we want to pass through. So these are the tags we're going to pass through to the VPC itself, the name, the project environment managed by, and then there's also variables in this module to give us uh, to allow us to tag the private subnets and the public subnets that it creates for us automatically. Okay, so this VPC module happens to do a lot of that work for us behind the scenes. It does kind of a lot of hard 
stuff, a lot of the heavy lifting for creating VBCs, which is why I like it. It makes it pretty simple. Um, in my case, you can see that I chose to make a single NAT gateway. So enable NAT gateway, so make one. Do a single NAT gateway, true. And one NAT gateway per availability zone, set that to false. Let's actually copy and paste that and head back to our browser here. And we'll open up the documentation of that and just see real quick what it's talking about. So this Terraform module will create a VPC resource in AWS. It's going to create the following stuff. The VPC, the subnets, the routes and route tables, the internet gateways if we want, um, NAT gateways if we want, and other stuff that we're not using particularly. So we have an example here, a name, the site or range, the availability zones, uh, the private subnet suite. This is, we created this list with our function, but this is if you hard-coded it, it's what it looks like. Enable NAT gateway, enable VPN gateway tags, all the good stuff. Okay, so NAT gateway scenarios. I did one NAT gateway per subnet. Um, I'm sorry, I did a single NAT gateway. So these are the flags to set, the variables to set to do that, which are the ones I set. The default is actually one NAT gateway per subnet. I would end up with six NAT gateways if I did the default, right? Because there's six subnets, two per availability zone. Or you can also do one NAT gateway per AZ, which I think is one I would prefer in most production environments personally, but it's very much up to your use case. So in that case, you set the variables like this. Do NAT gateway, single NAT gateway is false, one per AZ is true. Okay, so that's the different NAT gateway scenarios you could do possibly if you wanted to. Let's head back over here. We can see that that's basically it. If you want to see me manually create a VPC and define all the resources and all that stuff yourself, you can check that out in the free Terraform course at cloudcast.io. But I'm just going to go ahead and make this this way for now because it is much simpler. So I am in our current directory here. I'm going to do Terraform version. You can see I'm using the latest as of this video of 0.15. And I'm going to do an init because I have not initialized any of these settings just yet. So this is going to download the provider, the AWS provider, and it's going to download the module and all that good stuff that it sees referenced here. Now let's see, the module directory is not correct because I have too many things here. In our case, it's just going to be like this. That's going to be the correct module uh, directory path relative to the Cloudcast TF file here. Okay, so that's initialized. We can do Terraform plan. Okay, so 20 to add, 0 to change, 0 to destroy. Let's go ahead and just review this kind of quickly. It's going to create a few things. The first thing it's going to make is a EIP, an elastic IP address that's needed for the NAT gateway. And it's going to create the internet gateway and the NAT gateway itself and some route tables. And you can see this order that it's doing it in is actually the order that things need to get created in to prevent errors. So the NAT gateway and the internet gateway uh, get created. And then the route tables get created because the route tables will use the NAT gateway in the, IT, in the internet gateway. So the, here we have the uh, public internet gateway route table. So the one that will use the IGW, the internet gateway uh, route table for the private stuff, the one that's going to reference the NAT gateway. So route table association. So we have to associate a route to a route table and that route table gets associated with some of the subnets we make. And then we have a private subnet and we're going to have a few of these, right? So we're going to be six total subnets. So we can just scroll in by these and it creates the actual VPC itself. And that's about it. This is actually a pretty basic VPC setup and we're already managing 20 resources in AWS, which is why I love Terraform, this type of stuff. Doing it all manually gets to be really a pretty big hassle. All right, so we saw what it's gonna do here. Let's go ahead and apply this. Say yes to actually do the work and it's creating all the stuff now. We can see the net gateway here. These typically take the longest to create. But if we head on over to our browser here, we should see some stuff made already. So if I refresh this page, we'll see we have two VPCs. There's only, there is one NAT gateway that's still in the process of being created, I think. See, pending. Subnets are nine because we added six on top of the three that were made for the default VPC. And these will have some tags. So we know these are the ones that we just created for our staging environment. And some will be public and some will be private. So we see the uh, environment staging. The role is private for some and public for others. So if you click into a public one, the public one has a wrap table associated with an internet gateway, a private subnet. We'll have an association with the NAT gateway eventually, but the NAT gateway is still creating as I'm talking. So that's not associated just yet, but it will be when it's all finished. Okay, apply complete. Let's go ahead and actually refresh this page. And we'll see now the rat table has that NAT gateway association with it. Okay, so we have a VPC. The VPC has one NAT gateway and multiple subnets and is ready to 
allow us to put instances or whatever we want into this new VPC. 